Well, good morning, uh, West Brom. Here this morning, uh, bring you uh, the only good news that, uh, that there is these days. Well, in any day, any generation, it's always good news. The gospel, don't you know, is what we're talking about. Don't know if you've heard, don't know if you've been told before. You know that uh, there is hope. You know, there's uh, a hope that doesn't disappoint. There's, uh, there's a joy unspeakable to be had. There's, um, there's forgiveness, you know, to be, uh, to be obtained. You know, it's good news that uh, God himself has given to us that uh, men and women might come to know <coughs> his love, his grace. I come to know his favor. It's not what any of us deserve, you know, we don't. We deserve nothing but the bad news, you know, but uh, but the good news comes to you today here in West Brom that you might believe it and that you might be, you know, brought back to God, you know, because the problem is, you know, that entire human race has wandered, you know, strayed from God. We all like sheep of God as faith, the Bible says, you know, and we need to be brought back to God, and God has sent his good shepherd to bring his sheep back to him. And hearing the good news that they might believe and receive. Got a copy here of God's word, Mark of John's Gospel. Extract from the Bible. It's the only place where you find God's word, don't you know? Nowhere else. Uh, like to copy, it's offered to you. Free, you know, no cost, no obligation to you. If you'd like one, do feel free to come and ask for one. Freely offered, freely received. It's just like, you know, like the Savior himself, you know, you you receive God's word, you know, you take it just as it's uh, presented to you, you know, and on the same fashion, you know, as we, as we set forth the Savior before you, simply receive him. How are you doing, guys? Have a good day. You have a good day? Yeah. 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 What about the little bit of difference again? Well, it seems to me like, you know, there's only one God, you know, there can't be two. Can't be different way to follow it again? Different way to follow it? It's, it's um, you know, to me like, you know, the, the, the answer is not so much religion, you know, but the belief of the person. Son of God, you see, because the thing is, you know, that there's no forgiveness in any other name. And, um, you know, the, the, the proof is the proof is in the power. You know, what is that for? So if you got a right, someone said it comes to me and say they got another religion, I say, well, okay, well tell me, what's your religion doing for you? Does it make you a better, does it make you a better person? Does it make you a kinder person? Um, is it bringing forgiveness to you for your sins? Is it changing your life, transforming your life? Because all these things are the things that Jesus does. So if somebody's got a religion, a dead religion, it doesn't do none of those things for them. I say, well, maybe you need to look somewhere else. So all I'm saying is, you know, that Jesus, he's the answer, you know, he's the Lord. You know? Do you believe in the Holy Trinity? I do, sir, yes. Yeah. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. No, but then, I mean, one. No, 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 no. Two persons, two persons, but one God. Okay? No one sees God, but one God. No, that's right, that's right. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that. No man shall ever see God's name. Uh, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. is the exact representation of God's name. Have a good day, sir. Eh? So it's a good question, my friends. What is God like, you know? And what about other religions? The young man asked the question. Good question, you know? And questions that need, uh, you know, that they're answering. Now, you know, you ask the questions by all means, you know? I haven't got all the answers, you know? I'm not a walking encyclopedia, I'm not a walking Bible. I got some of the answers to some of your questions, but uh, if I haven't got the answer, I'll try and find it out for you. But do by all means ask the questions. 
and we'll see if we'll try to answer them for you. I mean, that's the question about religions, you know, other religions. Well, there can't be more than one God, there's only one. And of course, he has revealed himself, you know. And uh, he reveals himself, sir, even to head shakers. Head shakers. Even they, sometimes, you know, are discovered by God. So, you see, my friends, um, you know, uh, my question is, if you hold to another religion other than Christianity, let me ask you the question, what is your religion doing for you? Uh, make you a better person? Change your heart, you know? Is it taking away your sin? Forgiving your sin? Is it brought joy, love? Is it brought happiness into your life? Do you have the assurance of eternal life that when you die, you're going to be with God? You see, my friends, dead religion don't do that for you. And most, uh, well, most all of the religions of the world, every one of them, my friends, without exception, you know, that's what they are, just dead religions. They you aren't know, invented by men. Men like Muhammad, you know, the Pope of Rome, he's invented his own system. You know, they watched our society. There is, uh, I'm told, presently, there's 9,900 religions in the world today. Take your pick, any one you like, but ask my, answer my question. What is it doing for you? What is your unbelief? What is your secularism? What is your atheism doing for you? That make you a better person? That comfort you? That console you? That bring forgiveness to you? That bring love into your heart? That make you a better person? That give you some assurance when you die? Answers no. So you see, matters not what your religion is, what their society, Mecca, Rome, um, you know, uh, <laughs> even the religion of evolutionism. Yeah, that's a religion too. Religion of unbelief, but it's religion. Anti-God dogma. Uh, but see, don't do nothing for you, you know. Don't bring you to God, don't bring you to a knowledge of God, an experiential knowledge of God. To know God by experience. I don't mean just from a book. You can read the Bible and you can come away from reading the Bible. You can study the Bible. You can study, study the Bible thoroughly, very much, up one side and down the other, and come away from it and still not know God. That doesn't guarantee a knowledge of God. God has to reveal himself to you. And that's what he does. That's what Jesus means. But he says, you know, that you must be born again. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You see, my friends, God has to come to us and he has to reveal himself to us. I can't debate you into the kingdom of God. I can't argue you into the kingdom of God. I can give you all sorts of answers to your questions, but that won't bring you into the kingdom of God. I'm just a man, I'm just a preacher, I'm just a minister of the gospel, that's all I have. So my colleague and I, it's all we are, you know. God must do the business. God must reveal himself to you. It's by revelation, not religion. But you see, my friends, the means that God has appointed for this happening to men and women is what I'm doing here today. The preaching of the cross, God says in his word, to them that perish is foolishness. You know, foolishness, my friends. But you know, to, to we who are saved is the power of God. And to those who are being saved, my friends, it's the means that God is appointed to save men and women from their sin and to bring them to that knowledge of himself. When they listen, when they hear the word of God, when they hear the good news of the gospel, when they take it on board by faith, that is, when they embrace the engrafted word, the engrafted word being Jesus. This in my hand, this book in my hand, this is the word of God. Jesus, he's the living word of God. 
being grafted living word of God that is able to save your soul. Only Jesus, only Jesus can save your soul. Only Jesus can bring you to a knowledge of God. Only Jesus can open your heart. Only Jesus can bring you to that place of knowing that your sins are forgiven. And the, the hope, the assurance, my friend, of one day, one day when you breathe your last and go out of this world, fearlessly, fearlessly, my friends, with courage, knowing that death has no hold, no power over you, knowing, my friends, that it shall be well with your soul, knowing that you have eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So in the book of Psalms, my friends, in the Old Testament of the Bible, if you want to check it out, if you haven't got a Bible, gladly give you one, gladly give you one. If you want one, come and ask us. Love you to have one. If you'd like one, you come and ask. But you can check this out. In the Old Testament, King David, he was the king of Israel. He was a righteous man by faith in Jesus. He was a God-fearing man, God-loving man. He trusted God for his salvation. The thing that you want to do, the thing that we are encouraging you to do today, my friends, to trust in God through his son, Jesus Christ, that you might know eternal life in his name. Listen to what King David says. Psalm 33, verse 11, check it out. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The counsel of the Lord. That's what God, you see, has decreed from the beginning. God, you see, even before the foundation of the universe, even before the universe was created, God had thoughts, you know. And listen to what David goes on to say. He says, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. God has thoughts, you know. He has thoughts just like you and I. And he had thoughts before he created the universe, he had thoughts, you know, and he thought that he would create the universe. And as he thought about it, he decreed, my friends, he decided, that is, he determined, that is, what he would put into his universe. All the stars, the galaxies, the planets, the world, my friends, everything in the world, all creatures, great and small. And he thought to himself, too, he even thought about the matter of sin. He even decreed that, my friend, so that he could display, so that he could show his great mercy, his compassion, and his loving kindness. Because if there had been no sin, and there was no forgiveness, no good news, nobody would ever have known that God is merciful, kind, compassionate, generous. All we've known we might have known that God was powerful, almighty, able to do all kinds of things, but we would never, if there had never been sin, and if there was never forgiveness for nobody, my friends, nobody would ever have known what God is truly and really and essentially like. A forgiving God, a pardoning God, a merciful God, a God of great kindness. I tell you, if you take nothing away today from this, take this away and remember it. Maybe not for today, days to come perhaps, but remember this, my friends. There is forgiveness with God. There is forgiveness with God. Remember that, because that's the heart of the gospel. That's the counsel of God, my friends. And it stands forever, says David. Stands forever. There is forgiveness with God. There's a way back to God from the dark, dark, dark path of sin. There's a way, my friends. And Jesus says, I am the way. The only way, my friends. No one gets back to God. No one gets right with God. No one comes to the Father, he says, but by me. Only my friends, only through Jesus, 
the counsel of God that standeth forever. That God has decreed a universe. God has decreed humankind. God has decreed the fact of sin. And so for you to say that you're not a sinner, that you don't need God's forgiveness, is absolutely ludicrous. Because in the counsel of God, sin is, my friend, sin is undeniably. But there is forgiveness with God in the counsel of God too. A way by which men and women can be saved from that darkness of sin that haunts the world today. Can't you see it, my friends, in your society? Can't you see the depravity of men and women? Can't you see the wickedness? Can't you see how that it grows? Even here in your own town of West Brom, sin, my friends, grows and grows and develops, my friends. And the Bible says God's counsel is it shall grow and shall develop right to the end. And then when the cup is filled up, you see it? The cup of sin is filled up. Then the end will come and God will bring the judgment, the final judgment upon humankind for sin. But my friends, there's a way to escape that. There's a way by which you get a pass on the day of judgment. And God's counsel is that if you trust in my son, Jesus Christ, you get a pass on that day. You get a free pass on that day. You can't pay for it. You can't be religious for it. You can't do anything for it. You must trust God for it. You must believe in Jesus for it. No other way, my friend. Only believing. Only believing. God, you see, in God's counsel that standeth forever, you see, in his wonderful counsel. He decided, he thought, this is what I'll do. I'll send my only begotten son. I'll send my son into the world to rescue some of those sinners. Not all of them. Not all of them, my friend. Not everybody gets saved. Not everybody comes to Jesus. Not everybody gets the pass on the day of judgment. In fact, the majority don't. Only a few there be that be saved, my friends. Those who believe, those who trust in Jesus. Those whom God saves. Those whom God reveals himself to. And those whom God gives all the precious, precious gift of faith to, to be able to believe on the Son of God that they might be saved. That's how you get a pass on the day of judgment, my friend. Believing, trusting in God's Son. He thought he would send his Son Jesus into the world to be a mediator. You know, to stand between us and God, to reconcile us to God, you see? That we might be friends with God, if I might put it that way. You know, instead of what we are, enemies of God. It's what the Bible says, you see, that there is enmity, enmity in your mind, hostility in your mind against God. Why, of course, the Bible says that you cannot, you cannot be subject to the law of God, cannot obey the law of God as you should. The very opposite, you're contrary to God in your natures and contrary to God in your practice, lawless. That's what sin is, my friends. Lawlessness. And my friends, that ought to be evident to you now in your society, in your world today. It abounds everywhere. Everywhere, my friends. But it's because of that enmity, that hostility in your heart, in your mind against God, enemies of God. It's how we come into the world, you see. Conceived in sin, born in sin, live in sin and die in sin and go to the judgment of God, my friends, in your sin, in a damn worthy state and condition. Unless by the grace of God, unless by the grace of God, through the preaching of the gospel, God reveals himself to you, God reconciles you to himself, God, my friends, through his son, Jesus Christ, 
rescues you, my friend. But this is the counsel of God that stands forever, my friend. The counsel of God, my friend. Before the foundation of the world, God determined those who would believe, those whom he would save, those whom he would reconcile to himself. Are you, are you one of those? Are you one, are you one of, are you one of the Son of God's sheep? My sheep, he says, they hear my voice. Are you hearing the voice of the shepherd? Are you hearing the voice of the Son of God? Not the voice of a man, not just the voice of a preacher. Are you hearing the voice of the mighty Son of God, the Good Shepherd, who gives eternal life, my friends, to his sheep? And they, he says, shall never perish. That's in the counsel of God too, my friend. So you trust in Jesus. You're born again of God's Spirit. You repent of your sin. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have God's guarantee, my friend. God's assurance that you shall never perish. Because the counsel of God, it stands forever, my friend. It never changes. It's like God himself. He says, I am the Lord. I change not. Bible New Testament says, Jesus, the same yesterday and today and forever. And just as God, just as his son is unchangeable, so is his counsel. So, my friend, so is his counsel in regard to his salvation. It is faultless, my friend. It is immovable. It is rock-like. It is infinitely holy, just and good. The promises of God, my friend, that which he has determined, nothing, I tell you, nothing, nothing can change it and nothing can overcome it. All the plans and the schemes of men, governments, prime ministers, presidents, they plan all kinds of things. Men and women, they build all kinds of kingdoms. Or they try to do so. The kingdom of Mecca. The kingdom of the Watchtower Society. The kingdom of the Pope of Rome. They build their kingdoms, my friend. Sand castles built on sinking sand, my friend. They will be moved. They will be shaken. They will fall down. They will collapse, my friends. And the only kingdom left standing on that day when God judges the world in righteousness will be the kingdom of God and his Christ. The only kingdom left standing, my friends. You must belong to it. You must enter it, my friends one way and one way only and that my dear friends is through jesus believing on the son of god repent ye he says and believe the gospel why because the kingdom of god is in hand that's why and you cannot enter it but by the way of repentance and faith towards the son of god <coughs> And once you've entered that kingdom, my friend, you will be as the kingdom of God is, immovable, unshiftable, rock-like, never, never to be moved, my friend, never to be taken from the hand, from the clutches of Jesus. Oh, what assurance, my friend. Oh, I tell you, my friends, the counsel of God that standeth forever, the loving, loving counsel of God. In the love of God, my friend, we have such good news. Out of God's love, out of God's heart of love, my friend, he has given us such a savior, such a redeemer, such a mediator, such a one, my friends, who would come and who would love sinners, vile sinners 
Oh, I tell you, my friend, I encourage you to read the Bible for yourself. Read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And see some of the people that Jesus saved. Religious men came to him, but he, he sent them away empty because they trusted in themselves. But broken sinners came to him. Broken men and women came to him, pleading, asking for help. And they got the help. They got more than help. They got salvation. They got eternal life. They got the everlasting love of God. They got righteousness. They got peace. They got joy. They got all the blessings of God. Vile sinners, my friend. Broken sinners like you. Because they came to Jesus. Because they trusted in Jesus. That's why, my friend, because they believed his counsel. They took him at his word. They believed his word just as he told them to do it. He said, if, if thou can't believe all things are possible, the miracle of your salvation, sir. The miracle of your salvation. The miracle of the revelation of God's love in your heart. It's a possibility. It's a miracle, but it can happen. Here today at West Brom, some, some sinner takes Jesus at his word and believes upon him. Oh, all, everything is possible. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Oh, you see, but I don't believe. Oh, cry out like the man did. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. God give you the faith. God give you the gift of faith, maybe. But this counsel you see of love, it stands forever, my friend. He has love for the everlasting from all eternity, those whom he will save, those who will come to him, those who will repent of their sin, those who will believe on his son, Jesus Christ. Love, my friend. Some people in West Brom, I guess, like other places, you know, they'll love you. They'll love you if you love them. They'll love you if you're doing them favors. They'll love you if you're giving them something. But God loves freely, don't you know? And God loves forever and ever and ever. His counsel of love, it stands forever, my friend. I once set upon you, never, never to depart from you. The counsel of God's love, my friend. And his love demonstrated in this, my friend, in sending Jesus to rescue us, sending his son from heaven, all the way from heaven, Jesus came. Oh, my friend, out of the, out of the loving heart of God, out of the heart of God's love, I only came from Stoke and Trent, Staffordshire. It's only an hour's drive, my friends, that's not far to preach the gospel to you, but Jesus, the Son of God, came all the way from heaven, all the way from heaven, to save men and women from the snares, from the traps, my friends, of the devil, Satan, the old serpent, the dragon, the enemy of God and the enemy of men's souls, who traps men and women with lies and deceit, False religion, false science, you know? Evolutionary nonsense, you know? He calls it science and you believe it. And you become trapped in unbelief. That, my friends, is the work of the evil one. It's deceit, my friend. False religion, just the same, my friend. They're all traps and snares. Jesus came. Read the gospel, see for yourself. He saved outright unbelievers. He saved religious people. Ah, oh, he saved the worst, and he saved the best, my friend. And he still does. But of course, problem is, my friend, that there's no best in any one of us. There's no best in any one of us. Maybe perhaps you would say to yourself, well, I'm a good person. 
and not what the most of you would say. If I was to talk to you personally, you'd say I'm a good person. I'm not a sinner. I don't need God's forgiveness. I don't need the gospel. I don't need Jesus. Oh yes, you do. There's none good, says God. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Not righteous. Not a one, my friend. No, you're worse. Believe me, you're worse. Much, much worse. And even, my friends, even I can convey to you, utterly and totally depraved every single one of us. Born of a woman, conceived in sin, in your mother's womb, that's when you became a sinner. That's when your sin life, your sin career began in your mother's womb. Ping at that moment of conception. That's when you became a person, not a fetus, not a fetus, as these murdering, slaughtering abortionists would tell you. No, that's when you became a human being, and that's when you become a simple human being. And then nine months later you're born, and you begin to live and practice living in sin and deceit, in lies. You believe the lie and you live out of the lie. My friend, sin, it's in your very nature. It's in the, the very fabric of your being. It's in your DNA. You're hardwired for sin until you're born again. Until Jesus changes your nature, gives you a new nature, causes you to be born again takes the love of sin out of you and puts a hatred for sin into you and gives you a love, gives you a love for righteousness, gives you a love for God and gives you a love for your neighbor. But this, uh, this is all in the counsel of God too, my friend. This is all in the counsel of God that stands forever, my friend. God has chosen a people and God has rejected a people. An election according to grace and my friends, reprobation. God elects, he chooses and he rejects. The choice is God's, not yours or mine. And that stands as well. Stand forever, my friends. And my friends, the crooks of the matter the question for you today is not, am I, one of, am I one of his chosen? That's not the question. The question is, will you repent of your sin? Will you turn from your sin? Will you forsake your sin? Will you abandon your sin? And will you turn to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and embrace him, believe on him, embrace him in faith? Well then, my friends, you shall be saved. That's God's counsel. That those who repent, those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. And that's God's command to you today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved in thy house. Faith, my friend. Faith and faith alone. This is the counsel of God that stands forever that no flesh shall ever be justified in the sight of God. No flesh, no human being, that is, shall ever be made right with God by, by works, my friend, by your own doing. You can't make yourself better, no matter how hard you try. You can't make yourself right. You can't pay the price for your sin. You can't die for your own sin. My friends, my friends, you can do nothing but sin, impotent, powerless, in the face of the ravaging sin, my friends, that fills you, permeates the entirety of your being. No, no human being, no flesh shall ever be made right before God by the works of their own hand. It has to be the work of another. 
is to us the counsel of God that he would save those, save those who believed it, who trusted it, who looked to his appointed and anointed Savior, Jesus Christ. Send him, my friends, into the world to live the life that you should have lived but cannot, to die the death that's due to you, to die on that cross, to be lifted up on that cross, that those who look to him in faith, my friend, look to him, put their trust in him, that they would be saved. That's the counsel of God, and it stands forever, my friend. The only way a man, a woman can be saved. Look into Jesus, my dear. Amen. Nobody else. Thank you, madam. Amen. Anybody else give me an amen in West Brom today? Let's hear you. Let's hear you, Jesus. Son of God, counsel of God standeth forever. Jesus, my son, you look to him and be saved. All the ends of the earth, you look to him and faith, and you are saved. God has no other counsel. And it stands, my friend, if you will not believe, if you will not repent, if you will not trust in the Son of God, you will not be saved. You will not be saved. You'll be lost and you'll be lost forever. Lost in the damnation of hell. Believe me, believe God's word. There's something to be saved from, my friend. Your sin is misery. The destruction it causes in your life now. But the everlasting destruction, my friend, this is upon you in that day when God judges you. The counsel of God shall stand, my friend. The judgment of the wicked, Son of God, is coming. Coming again with his holy angel and flaming fire taking vengeance upon those who know not God and who obey not the gospel. Coming, my friends, to judge the quick and the dead. Those, my friend, those who are alive, those who are dead, buried in their grave, resurrected to the judgment of God, where we shall all appear before the judgment throne of God and give account, my friend, for what you believe, for what you believe, what you don't believe, trusting in false religion, trusting in false science, trusting in everything, everything, but God's appointed Savior, Jesus Christ. Only, only those who believe in Jesus, only those who trust in God, appointed, mediator get a pass on that day of judgment and he my friend I have to tell you he is the judge he is the judge the judge has been appointed Jesus is his name the one who today would be your savior the one who today would save you from sin the one who today would take the wrath of God from off you. The one, my friends, who would bring you into the everlasting love and righteousness of God today. In that day, he'll be your judge. He will judge you in perfect righteousness. The judge has been appointed. The day has been appointed. We're not told when that day will be but it's coming and coming soon and you stand before God my friend you stand before judge Jesus and you give account my friend he says for every idle word that you've ever spoken every idle word you've ever spoken he says you'll give account for it yeah. every vile deed every thought Every action, my friend, everything you ever did, did will be published across the universe for everybody to see and know. My friend, the judgment day 
when you stand before Judge Jesus and you give account even for this day, this occasion when you heard the gospel, when you heard the good news of the kingdom of God, when Christ was set forth before you, when you were told about the fact of your sin, when you were told about the forgiveness of God, when you were told about the love of God, when you were told about the righteousness of God, but you would not. You would have nothing. You would have nothing to do with the Savior. You rejected him again. And maybe perhaps again and again and again and again. Until you're so hardened in your heart that you're impervious, impervious to the claims of the gospel. Until you're beyond redemption. Oh, don't let that happen to you. Don't let that happen to you, my friend. Now is the time, now is the accepted time, says God. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get right with God. No time like the present, my friend. You haven't got tomorrow. You haven't got tomorrow. You haven't got next week. You haven't got your retirement. No guarantees, my friends, not at all. You don't know. You don't know what a single day may bring forth. As the COVID-19 arises again from the ashes, my friends, how many more will it take out of this world? COVID-19 has taken its thousands out of this world. Sin, sin has taken its billions out of this world to a lost eternity. That's in the counsel of God to, as well. Hell, my friends, the place of eternal punishment, the place of eternal torment. That's in the unchangeable counsel of God too. And that's the destination, my friends, of Christ rejecting sinners. That's the end. So I see, my friends, that's in the counsel of God too. To be escaped from, my friends. To be avoided at all costs. And the only way, my friends, the only way is through faith in Jesus. The only way you can escape that eternal torment. The only way you can escape the penalty is trusting in the one who took the penalty upon himself. Who took the wrath of God. Who took hell, endured hell in his own body on that cross so that the sinner my friend the sinner who truly repents the sinner who truly believes on Jesus that punishment my friend that penalty for them is taken away so far away my friend so far away that not even God himself can find it as far as the east is from the west, your sins removed forever by the blood of God's Son, by the blood of the eternal covenant. No other way back to God. No other way, my friends. One way only. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Neither is there salvation in none other name under heaven. The whole canopy of heaven, whereby we must be saved. Jesus, Jesus, J, E, S, U, S. Jesus is his name. Remember, West Brom, you heard it in this place. Jesus, Savior, Christ and Lord, able to say to the uttermost all who come to God through him believe trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today 
and you shall be saved. Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. West Brown, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Oh, you'd like a copy of God's word? Gladly. God's counsel that stands forever. His written word, my friends. You'd like a copy of God's word? Freely offered. No cost, no obligation to you. You would like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you. Bless you and have mercy upon your precious never die in soul.